Hey, everybody. Hey, y'all. Give us a hey, y'all, Samantha. Hey, y'all. It's episode something. (laughs) Are you ready for Q4? Because it is coming like a train down the tracks. What are we doing to get ready? Let's talk about it. So excited. It's best time of the year. Oh, eBay's chiming at me already. Oh, wow. (laughs) Your Q4 has already started then. Nice. I I feel like it did this holiday weekend, but it's probably just false start. It's okay. Hey, we'll take it anytime. All right. Mm So Q4 is generally our best time of year for most resellers. Um, Not everybody, not everybody. Uh, What we're going to talk about can apply to you if maybe summer is your busy season. A lot of resort towns uh, see that in uptick um, in the summer season where we're experiencing summer slowdown. But we're coming up on a busy time. No matter what time of year that busy time is for you, there is certain prep work you have to do. Mental, physical. Amen. Yeah. All right. So where are you going to start? Because I'm going in with really, really high hopes that I'm going to be spending all of my time shipping and yes. not have as much time listing. Well, I just, something that I always forget, and I feel like a lot of people forget is to get your shipping supplies. Be well stocked in shipping supplies because you know you're going to do a lot of shipping. You know you're going to be busy with that, but you want to be well prepared for that because sometimes your normal places that you get that from are sold out or your, your, your vendors don't have what you need. So do it now. Do it right now. Right now. (laughs) <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'm definitely going to do that. All right. So something that changed um, for me with the shipping and what kind of shipping supplies I need to stock, I shipped almost everything priority mail unless it was under a pound. Yes. All right. So now I have all these priority mailboxes and yes. I find myself like scrounging for other boxes because ground advantage, ground advantage that's going to be a whole other episode has been a game changer for my hard goods. It's been great. It's more affordable to ship. Yeah. USPS did something we're all happy about. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I've definitely seen an uptick in sales of hard goods, but now I don't necessarily have the boxes for this new uptick. So I I had to figure that out. And we're just hoping for more Poshmark sales because we can use the priority boxes for those. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've been using all my priority. I'm like, oh, it's a Posh sale. I mean, I get to use up one of my priority mail yeah. um, things. But the vast majority of items I've sold on eBay are cheaper ground advantage. Yeah. Absolutely. Same here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I still occasionally it's something is cheaper to ship um, priority, but I c- comp those and uh, decide there. So, um, yeah. yeah, I have to figure out uh, now that I no longer have a, um, a partner that uh, works in a warehouse and gets me all sorts of packing supplies Ooh. and boxes. I got to figure out this this Q4 prep looks very different because of those two things for me this year. Yeah, yeah, so I got to figure out my boxes and uh, packing material right now. I always say hair salons. My cousin keeps me well supplied in the paper, the, the stuffing paper, mm. and the heavy duty boxes, and the smaller box, all of it. I yeah, amazing. See, I also have that changed this year because my mother no longer um, has the hair salon because oh. that was a huge supplier too. Yeah, so really, I'm gonna have to. I really have to, I'm glad we're having this conversation because I didn't realize how much more prep I was going to have to do and be ready for, because I'm not going to have time to be running to get boxes and packing supplies and things like that. Yikes. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to, you don't want to wait till the last minute and then not have them be available. Right. I mean, cause that, that definitely happens. That happens a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'll be doing that immediately, getting that figured out. Uh, poly right. bags, we will link up. We have some shipping supplies uh, on our consignmentchats.com website. Uh, some of our favorite tried and true tested things, uh, thermal printer. Um, if you do have the money to invest in one, um, before Q4 is probably a good time to do it. If you anticipate spending a lot of time on shipping, uh, mm-hmm. as we've said before, uh, we do not recommend anyone making purchases that their business 
cannot support. So make sure you have that money set aside. That's kind of a C chats thing. You'll hear all things like all over the place, but uh, I've mentioned before, I parted out my old printers to pay for my thermal printer mm -hmm. uh, because I didn't want to just put out money that I was hoping to make. I want to put out money that I had made and set aside for the printer. So there are all sorts of creative ways that uh, you can support your thermal printer habit. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so that is also linked up on our website um, if you need advice or um, just kind of want to get reviews or hop in our community, check it out, see what people are using. Uh, in a listing party, speaking of boxes, mm -hmm. in a listing party, which is um, part of List Perfectly, comes with your subscription. There's a 24-hour room. There's um, subject-specific uh, listing parties and you get on, you chat with other resellers. Um, our code is always in the show notes. If you are interested, if you have questions, just ask us. But one of the things I learned in a listing party from our buddy, Franklin Hill Ventures, Stuart, was album boxes, adjustable album boxes. He sent me a link. Mm -hmm. and I love these things for uh, comic books, for vinyl records, for laser discs, for um, ephemera. Like I, I just shipped out some Elvis photos this morning. Um, yes. They are Plates. amazing and you can adjust the depth. They are oh so well worth it. So I'm definitely going to stock up on some more of those because I've used, I've used them and it was so quick because that's true. I need to look at my stash yeah. too. That was like a happy accident for me. So when I first started with the shipping stuff, I ordered, I, I had some albums that I needed to sell and I ordered some random supplies and a lot of them, they kind of shake out. You figure out what you need, what you don't need. You end up with these bags left over or right. those, those boxes. I hardly ever sell records, but like you said, they're handy for so many more things. Plates is the thing yeah. I've been using them for recently to double box plates. I forgot about the plates. Oh, I mm -hmm. definitely single box some collector's plates in those. Um, yeah. yeah, I forgot about those because really I don't like to admit that I sell collectible plates. <laughs> Me neither, <laughs> but I sold another one last night of them hummingbird plates. So <laughs> thanks, Don. Mm -hmm. Thanks, listing yeah. party. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, they are definitely, especially using ground advantage. Now more of that stuff is selling and uh, I would always use the 12 by 12 by nine large priority mail. Molly laughs at me because I always know the measurements of all the priority boxes. It's kind of <laughs> my like, specialty. Um, but anyway, I, you know, now that I can't use that for my, for the collectible plates or mm -hmm. I need something plain that doesn't say priority mail on it. Yeah. I need a backup. So, all right. Yep. So those I'm going to order tape. I always have a lot, a lot of tape. Always need you know, tape. something that's good is to think about your backup shipping method. Ooh. And I got this tip from Kathy Terrell uh, mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, we were talking about prepping for the busy time. And she said, think about having a backup. And I was like, Oh, I got it. You know, I have my printer. I have, I think this must've been before my therm before I had thermal printers. Um, I, I have my printer. I'm all set. Well, wouldn't, you know, the printer died. Yes. The one I parted out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, but I had taken her advice to heart and I had, I had a backup and I had it ready to go. It was another like laser jet that I had just set to the side. Also the one I parted out, um, but <laughs> it got the graveyard of printers. those couple days. So even if it's knowing how to use a QR code and take it to the post office, like just mm -hmm. think about your backup systems because when you're spending that much time shipping those hours, like you can't lose a day. You can't lose a couple hours. It really, you know, it will really eat into your, into your profit. 
Mm -hmm. Um, So think about that, maybe another scale or, you know, have your, know where your kitchen scale is. If you have one in case you have, you know, your scale goes dead, make sure you have extra batteries for your scale. Mm -hmm. Those silly little things, all of your husband's tape measures, make sure you take all of them and hoard them in your office just in case. (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) So that was, we've talked about this before is having your shipping station organized. We're going to talk about mm-hmm. other things prepping for Q4, but we're getting really so much deep shipping. into the shipping <laughs> thing because I'm really into it lately because I realized it's taking me, it, my processes were so inefficient. It was really taking me uh, too much time to ship. So I've put a lot of thought into these, these things and being ready, but having your supplies and your tools, your, you know, um, exacto knife your scissors whatever you need maybe Mm -hmm. consider having a set that stays at the shipping table all the time that is exclusively for shipping yes yes i so i recently did that over the summer was i just made one spot like i it started up here, but then it was all over. And mm-hmm. Nope. I put everything downstairs. That's where my inventory is. That's where I'm going to pull orders. And then I don't have to run up multiple floors and go back and forth and do all those things. But then I also just recently helped my cousin move and I brought over things like the, the knives and boxes and tape guns. And yesterday I was running around and I'm like, how do I only have one tape gun? Where is that tape gun? What are we? So yes, backup things. Make sure one stays in your shipping area so you can mm-hmm. find it. I almost had to tape my hand and who does that? I mean, geez. <laughs> yeah, that's that. That's really something. Brought me back to my early days and I didn't like it. I didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. So think about having a, a set that is set aside just for your ship that does not move. You threaten your family, anybody yes. that might get their grubby little hands on it. Yes. Um, you know, yes. charger back, you know, a charger for your shipping station, whatever, whatever you use there every day, maybe think about just having something set aside that always stays at your shipping station. Mm-hmm. Makes life so much easier, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I also need to think about the backup plan. I can QR code. No problem. Did that for a long time before I got a printer. But Poshmark doesn't do that. Mercari does. eBay does. Mm -hmm. Poshmark does not. Neither does Facebook, I don't think. Mm. I'm going to have to think about that. I only have one printer. Okay. All right. I'm going to have to learn the hours to the library just in case. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. All right. Or does your mom have a printer? Or does she use yours? She, she QR codes or she uses mine. Okay. All right. So she doesn't have a backup you can use. Yeah. But all right. Just think, just think through it because these things are going to, they're going to happen, right? They're going to yep. happen and you don't want to get deep. You don't want to get derailed. Definitely. All Good right. One. So what else? Let's see. What else shipping wise? I'm really into this whole shipping thing today. Hi. Oh, well, you definitely have to communicate with, if you have your person pick them up, the USPS person, do pickups. Mm -hmm. I've been warning mine. It's going to get busier. I know some days I don't even have packages right now, or there's just a few. And then there'll be days when, you know, I have a dozen of them and they're like, oh, what, what is this? And I'm like, okay, well, coming soon, this will be every day. Fingers crossed people, we got this. But this will be all the time. Please be prepared. Bring an extra bag, a bin, whatever they're going to need. Be prepared. Or do you want me to start bringing them to the post office? Or what's the process? But just try to communicate with them. Give them little goodies. Buy some snacks for them. It helps. Definitely helps. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I always get, like, in December, I would I put a box of, like, snacks out for all the delivery people and the pickup people. And they just love it. And it's just something totally simple but yep. communication with your yeah yeah definitely yeah because i would being in a new spot now i've definitely been in communication with them and said you know it, it can vary like one day i could have three packages one day i could have like today like almost 40 packages right so yeah it just, like you, you just you don't know so he no- needs to know to cycle back around with his truck because he doesn't have room 
So whatever, just, you know, definitely make sure you're, you're communicating that it may be variable. Because yeah. They, you know, as like my old post, my old postman Norm, who I've talked about, I think there's actually, he's on video on one of our C chats shorts, I think. Um, yeah, I would know, he would know it was Q4 when he would come, I would come into my driveway and I would hear him go, oh, please. <laughs> You'd see the packages. <laughs> I'd be oh, you, my window and I'd hear him, and I'd be like, "Oh God, he was a character." I, I, you've had some crazy, some crazy hauls too. So yeah, yeah. yeah so his little truck was not going to cut it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what we're under construction right now, and there was a lady covering for us on Saturday, and this past Saturday was Labor Day weekend, um, from when we're recording, and. The post office was closed for a few days. They did it great and gave their people time off. So the lady that was covering was not expecting a huge, like, it must have been four and a half feet tall, the box of golf clubs, the set that I sold the other day. Oh, nice. Yeah. And we're under construction. So she's walking around and I was like, oh, I also have this one that you missed. And she's like, oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what am I Sorry. supposed to do with this yeah and I and we had tried to bring it to the post office but it was closed so that was our option I'm like please please <laughs> yeah yeah see I have the problem now is that they come late in the day after the post office closes Ooh, to yeah. do my pickup so if there's a sub on the route now they've come every day and they've been really good but if there's a right. sub on the route that doesn't know and we I'm out out in the country so there's there's been a lot of subs um mm-hmm. I'm like stuck in this weird limbo like do I just like, take them all to the post office because if they yeah, miss you- it one day that's really going to screw me Ooh, up and my hard. customers as well right I don't know. I don't know. I toy with the fact of giving myself a cutoff. Like we actually did this past weekend. I said, well, if they're not picked up by like three o'clock, then I'll just bring it inside. It'll go out on Monday. It's not that big a deal. Tuesday, yeah. not that big a deal. Well, then she came walking across our yard at like 445. And that's mm-hmm. when I ran out. I was like, wait. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's hard to know. Everything fluctuates, but just have a good relationship with your USPS people or whoever picks up your packages and you'll all be able to work it out. Yeah. And think about the time that saves you to have a pickup. Mm -hmm. Like for me, that would be an hour out of my day if I was to bring everything to the post office, an hour out of my working day. Like that's a pretty significant amount of work I could get done or I can schedule a pickup. So I'm I'm a big fan of the pickup and the time that saves. Some people are just not comfortable with it. And depending on where you live, if you have, you know, porch pirates or anything like that, I, I don't know. I haven't dealt with that. So, but okay. think about time. Time is money. They're out to sing a little something <laughs> because Molly's not here. So I had a, I had to insert a little song there. That's for you, Molly. <laughs> All right. Besides shipping, what else do we have to think about for Q4 for the busy time? Keep listing now. Just keep listing. List. Exactly where I was going. Yes. (laughs) And it's hard because, you know, things for me have been have been slow and it's really hard. Like I need that instant gratification of like, all right, well, I just listed 50 things. Why didn't I sell at least 25 of them? Right. And uh, it's so fr- like it's so frustrating. It's hard to keep putting that work in, but I just keep reminding myself, you know what, I'm doing this because I'm not gonna have time to list. But sometimes we lose faith. I mean you know, raise your hand if you're out there. Sometimes we lose faith that it's going to pick back up. Yes. Myself included every year for the past 11 years, 12 years, I've, I've lost faith. Even, even sometimes just in a week span, sometimes I'm not even waiting for Q4. Sometimes I'm like, I haven't had (laughs) eBay sale in two days. What's going on here, people? Come on. And I lose faith. I'm like, that's it. My business is done. It's over. Right. Right. Yeah. But it Go gets back. better. Yeah. Keep being consistent. Keep listening. 
Don't worry about seasons. Just if you have inventory, list it. Get it up there. Get it out there for people to see. That's a really good point too, because all right, I ha- and I've talked with people that ha- that do this. They will actually take down their seasonal items. Yes, yes, I, and not just one Great person. Support. Several people that I have um, worked with who would do that. Now, just because. Christmas is coming. And just because Halloween is around the corner does not mean this is prime time to sell your Halloween and Christmas items. I sold more holiday items in January last year than I sold during the entire fourth quarter. So I sold more Halloween items last year on the week of Christmas than I did any other time last year. The week of Christmas, I was selling them like crazy. Yeah. So don't necessarily think that, um, you know, when you're thinking about prepping for Q4, it's to, you know, get that holiday stuff up. Yes. I think new with tag stuff does do better in Q4. See a little bit of an uptick in that. But if you have stuff, list it, leave it listed. It's not it'll only work to your benefit as far as far as my experience has shown me. I agree. It also hurts my heart when people set things aside. They'll get knee deep into listing. You know, you we say oh. everybody should batch and you should yeah. work through that batch and list. They'll get knee deep into it and then they go, oh, Q4 is coming up. I need to stop listing summer stuff and I need to start listing winter stuff. How much time would it take you to finish listing that summer stuff? Is it really going to make that big a difference if you just finish that for the next couple of days and then go to your winter things? because I really don't think it matters. I sell winter jackets all summer long, probably more than my summer stuff. Really? (laughs) I I have really messed up. We're really messed up. (laughs) I have a lot of winter jackets. It's easy to source here and get here and they sell all the time. So Mm -hmm. yeah, just don't, don't overthink it. Just list, 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 list. Yes. I was so, when I went from uh, the brick and mortar to solely online, it was very liberating because in a brick and mortar, it does look like you will see those seasonal changes. Yes. Like I still think it's good to have some off season stuff in there. Um, and a lot of our sea chatters do that in their brick and mortars for vacation yeah, people and yeah. their vacation and cruise racks with all their summer dresses. And yeah. Things. I love yeah. that. Yeah. But it was mm-hmm. so liberating when I went online and I no longer was you know, beholden to the season and I could just take anything, anytime and, and list it and sell it. So, yeah. So then you have to, if you're an online seller, think about how amazing that is because you don't have that opportunity elsewhere as, as much. You have to like retrain your consigners too. Like they will hold things and wait. They'll bring you all your, all their Christmas stuff in October. And by then it's, it's almost too late. Really. If you're thinking about holiday or Q4 stuff now, I'd get on it, get on it because it's almost too late, but they would hold it and wait. And I'm like, what are you? No, no, no. Bring, you can bring that to me in February. I'm fine with that. Let's list it. Let's do it. Like anything, anytime, bring it on. (laughs) (laughs) So don't lose faith. If your sales are not where you want them to be right now, just put your head down. Just keep listing. Listen to T-Money and shut up and list. Yes. It will catch up. And we will say, you will come to us and you will post in the community. Wow, I didn't think it was going to happen. Because why? Because I've done that every year. Wow, you know what? I'm glad I kept the faith. I really didn't think it would happen. Unless this year is different. But I don't think it's going to be. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be that different. I, I don't think fine. so either. I don't think so. Yeah. Things things are slower. I want to acknowledge that. Things are slower. Things are slower. Yeah, definitely. But people, think about all you people out there listening. Think about how much you love to source. That is how much the rest of the world likes to shop for the holidays. There will be buyers. It's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Mm-hmm. All right. So keeping the faith, getting our shipping supplies. Having a backup plan. What else? I feel like if Molly was here, she would have something really profound to say that we've forgotten. She always does. 
if Molly, <laughs> when you're editing this, if you want to just enter it right here, something very profound. She's going to just put like the word profound. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So uh, social media, like prep for Q4, like what is your social media going to look like? Do you want to schedule it? Cause you're busy, you know, you're going to be busy shipping. I know I'm not a fan of scheduling social media. Samantha is a very big fan of scheduling social media. I don't like to go too far out, but I, I can see the benefit for just holiday times. Like if you, I usually only schedule a week or two ahead, but I could see like the days that you're going to take off during the holidays. If you're not going to be doing your normal social media or different things around Christmas or something, schedule a couple posts on there to get people chatting. If you have, if you have a brick and mortar and you have certain sales coming up or online stores, you have sales coming up. Put those in there ahead of time, a couple days before your sale is scheduled to start. Because we do schedule our sales, so we might as well schedule the promotions that go with them. Mm. And it'll just, you can always go back and tweak them if you get closer to it and you're like, oh, actually, I wanted to word it like this or we change it to this. You can change that, but at least the foundation and most of the work is done for you. But before you do that, do you know what you should really do? If you guys have not done this, go back. Figure out your ideal customer. Yes. Because you want to know who the heck you're marketing to, what you're marketing. It makes scheduling those posts, writing those posts, doing promotions so much easier. So much yeah. easier. I yeah, just asked so, myself, what would Stephanie do? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I, like in all seriousness, if you haven't done that, stop, go do your ideal customer. It will make going into Q4 and it will make your social media posts, your marketing so much more efficient and so much easier to write because how many of us have like looked at social media and we go, oh God, I just, I just don't know what I'm going to post. I don't know what, and that's a lot of time wasted trying to figure that out. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So go mm-hmm. do it. You need help. Hop in our Patreon community and we can give you one on one coaching on it. We can go through the ideal customer with you. We can we can do all that. We can help you through that. We can help you with social media posts, whatever it is, wherever you are and um, whatever you want to kind of mastermind with us. We're there. We can do it. Absolutely. I found myself really putting a lot of weight on my social media posts recently, like to the point where I just stopped making them because I was so worried about them. So and there. Yeah. Yeah. I was way overthinking it. So now I just pop pictures. If I am listing an item that seems really interesting, but I already had a post today or I already have things. That's okay. It's in there. I took it and I can schedule it out or I can just just things that if it strikes me, I don't overthink it. Just, hey, guys, this mug's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. That's Stephanie awesome. would like that. Stephanie yeah. likes it because it's got my face. She likes me. We're friends. So, yeah. That's... <laughs> but I just, you got to stop overthinking it and just put things out there. Some of my best posts are ones where I'm like, I don't think anybody's going to comment on this, but right? I think it's cool. And then before you know it, I never even have to comment on it or respond to anybody because they're having their whole own conversation going on over there. Yeah, that's the mm-hmm. truth. Don't overthink it. Yep. All right. So we got this. We're going to go do our ideal customer. Yeah. We're going to figure out our marketing ahead of time. Mm-hmm. We are going to order our shipping supplies. Absolutely. And when the sales aren't coming in, we're going to shut up and list. Amen. Amen. And that's, that's all we need for Q4, right? It's It's not scary. It's not scary. No, no, it's exciting. Those money mountains are, are coming down to manageable levels. The packages are going out. Now, what about And I think we'll probably do a whole episode on this because it is so incredibly important is making time for yourself. Yes. Because there is a lot of, most of us have uh, family commitments, holiday commitments, uh, travel expectations, things that we need to do over the holidays, things we want to do over the holidays. And there are 
I'm going to refer back to the episode we did on time management and boundaries, Um, Mm -hmm. scheduling that time, being present for your family, being where your feet are. So give that some thought. Like when you're able to walk away from your work, are you able to walk away from your work and shut it down, close the door, spend time with your family? So put a little prep into that. Like, you know, maybe you're going to work really hard, you know, eight hours during the day. Mm-hmm. Or some of us 16. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, well, some days are like some days are like that. But when you're working, you're working hard. And when you're with your family, it is just your family. So if you have to put a time block on your schedule for your family or cookie baking, that is one thing I'm gonna be doing. Um yeah. Put it on your calendar if you respect your calendar. Yeah. yeah. And if you need extra time. You're spending time with business, time with family, getting pulled in all these different directions. You're having fun. You love your job. You love your family. But remember yourself. Some things we've heard recently was, I haven't been able to read that book I really wanted to read. I haven't been able to do that craft project that's been sitting aside for a long time. I just want to enjoy my coffee on my deck. I want to go for a walk in my field. Schedule that. Even if it's 10 minutes, 10 minutes to craft real quick, 10 minutes to read a chapter of a book, 10 minutes to walk outside and feel the grass. Schedule that in there. Sometimes you got to do it in the middle of what you would consider your work day. Yeah. But then your family's not there. Maybe they have a different schedule. So do what works for you so you truly get your time. It's amazing what happens when you actually mark it on the schedule, isn't it? Yeah. If you have not tried this technique of scheduling something that like a 10 minute walk for yourself, Mm -hmm. I'm just asking you to please put it in your calendar, whether it's your Google calendar or written calendar, just try it and see how it works out for you because it does something. It does something. It liberates you. It's on your calendar. You got to do it. You got to do it. You schedule it. It's something to check off your list. How... How great is it that you get to check something off your list and go for a walk today? (laughs) Great. Brilliant. Brilliant. (laughs) I love it. We're doing it. All right. So I, I, I think we're all ready. Yeah, I'm prepped. I'm ready for Christmas cookies now. Sounds great. Oh, yeah. It's going to be awesome. I'll have to post Mm -hmm. some pictures. Definitely. I have. All right. So I'm just a quick little, quick little personal aside. When I was in high school, I should have always known that I was not going to be a microbiologist, even though I went to school for an insane amount and got a microbiology degree. But anyway, I was always into business and entrepreneurship. And when I was in 80, 1989, I started a Christmas cookie business, little cottage industry business, because I wanted uh, skis. And oh. my parents refused to, they told me it was a rich person's sport, a rich man's sport, um, is what my father had told me. So they would not support my ski habit. Now, we live next to a ski resort. Uh, <laughs> hey. So I was bound and determined to get myself a pair of skis and ski passes and whatever. So I, 1989, I started um, this Christmas cookie business and I pretty much took over the house, bought myself skis, ski passes, everything. And I still have my, this was before spreadsheets, folks. Um, I still have, and I will have to take a picture of it, of my original loose leaf binder that has all my receipts from the supplies I bought, how much I sold, where I, you know, who I sold it to, what the recipes are. I'll have to share that with you guys. But so Christmas cookies and entrepreneurship and business all go together in my, in my brain. Yeah. I love it. I had a neighbor that did that with me for my lemonade stand. I just wanted to have a lemonade stand. She made me write down how much napkins were and cups and the water and the and break it down on what that cost per cup and am I going to make a profit? It would holy mo at the time a little much, but now very thankful. <laughs> right? 
I just, I take that out every year and I just look at it and I'm like, this was always my destiny that I would be running a business and like doing spreadsheets. I just denied it for a really long time. (laughs) I was pretty sure I was going to be a scientist for a long period of time, but (laughs) Mm. hi, yay, yay. All right. (laughs) Well, until next time. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for joining Libby, Molly, and Samantha, the ladies of Consignment Chats, as we build a resourceful community of collaborative resellers. Find all the ways to connect with us on consignmentchats.com. Episodes are available on YouTube and anywhere you get your podcasts. In addition, join our free private Facebook community.